Heart rate training is common at Orange Theory and other facilities, but it's less common at CrossFit affiliates. Today, Chris Follick of CrossFit Justice will explain how he uses heart rate monitors to help his clients. This is Two Brain Radio, and I'm Mike Morgan, your host. Please subscribe and hit like wherever you're watching or listening. Now, I'm well known in the local fitness community for winning the first 15 seconds of every single workout and then finishing dead last at the end. I go out too hot. I do not pace myself. I take light, lengthy rest breaks all the time. Chris Follick just might have a solution. Chris, welcome from Michigan. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now, if I screw up in this show and my heart rate spikes, are you going to be able to talk me down to a like a nice even 60, right? I'll give it my best shot. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. So we should actually probably have heart rate monitors on for this show, but uh, at Two Brain, we always want to find out what clever people are doing in the community. And this was something I hadn't seen before. So uh, Chris Cooper mentioned it, and I think it's time to talk about heart rate in a functional fitness gym. So I was uh, brought into functional fitness old school in about like 2008, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah. Go hard, max out. You know, I've learned many rough lessons, but I've also really stubbornly refused to learn other lessons. I need you to talk to me like the dinosaur I am. How does heart rate training make for a better session at your facility? Yeah, definitely. Um, what I found and with my staff and my wife, uh, who's also on staff with us, is it just kind of, it permeates the gym and it just brings everybody down a notch just to stay calm, to stay present and to be very intentional with our training. As you mentioned, you go out like kind of hot and heavy the first 15 seconds. We get that on certain days. And I'm sure that we'll talk about that during our time here together. But on most days, being able to walk into a gym, tone it down a notch and be very intentional with our training has helped uh, not just our members uh, feel better, move really well, but it's also helped us from a business perspective and just retaining members uh, for the, the long term. We've got members who are celebrating seven and eight years with us. We've taken over like three years ago. Um, so they were here beforehand. I'm sure we'll talk about that too and how they've transitioned their mindset and their, their shift in that, which is really cool. Um, but now I've got a longer to remember. And so just kind of being able to combine those two things has been really, really helpful for us as a gym and a business. So you took over three years ago and the affiliate's been around for seven, you said? Uh, going on close to 10. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say the, the name CrossFit Justice is such a strong name that I figured it was an older affiliate because you probably can't get that one anymore. So yeah. Uh, the question, I guess, would be, uh, did you did you guys put in heart rate training as the new owners? We did. So we took over what we call it as classic CrossFit. That's what everybody was accustomed to. And then early on, this guy named Max Finkbinder and Kate Keynes, they were kind of business partners down in uh, Ann Arbor at CrossFit Treetown. And they started laying the foundation before we even arrived. And we had a lot of really good people who um, they're in the triathlon community, they're in the uh, marathon community, uh, obstacle course racing, all those different things. And they go, this could really benefit me on those longer duration races. So when we take took over, that transition hadn't happened yet. We're like, you know what? We really want to try this ourselves. We want to get our feet wet. We want to engender some trust with these people before we just change the entire philosophy, albeit the trajectory of the gym. And so we did that in the first like five to six months and we've never looked back. And it's been a, it's been a great shift to have that. So uh, some people laid the groundwork for us first and we just kind of take it from there. I'm going to ask you about that transition, but first I want to give people the kind of the lay of the land. So tell me the yeah. details, like talk to me about the equipment, the cost of this, the system, the ROI sure. on the procedures, like what's the investment like in this system? Do members pay more? Give me the, the details of how this thing works in your affiliate. Yeah, definitely. So from a membership perspective, it doesn't cost the member anything extra. Okay. So we just kind of built everything into the cost. We did charge them initially the cost of their heart rate monitor, but it's like that they get to keep it. They don't mm -hmm. rent it from us or anything like that. And if we part ways, they keep it as a parting gift. Right. So I recognize that as a gym owner, business owner, like if I'm going to institute this, I'm going to eat the cost because I'm asking my member to change. So we talked about engendering trust. I thought that was one way that we could do that. In terms of uh, a business perspective, we had to buy a couple different like monitor, like screens just to put them up in our gym, like you see in Orange Theory, right? 
you think about the cost of a screen. What is that? A couple hundred dollars. Okay. A tablet that then transmits the heart rate monitors up to the screen so the member can see it. So the cost of a tablet's like a hundred dollars. Um, a couple of things like that. Maybe a Google Chrome to cast total like build out cost of that maybe $1,500. So if your gym is already doing well, it's a little bit of an investment, but it more than pays for itself very, very quickly as those <laughs> members stay. And in bodies like, like 8,000 or something like that. A lot of people have bought that. So 1500 is not a huge, uh, huge deal in the grand scheme of things. What does one individual monitor for a client cost? Uh, 50 bucks. And then I just, you know, it's um, not insured. Uh, it's good for a year or so. And if it, is defective, then I try to get them a new one for free. In Wahoo, they're really good about that. They ship them to them, you know, for free. And we also build that into the cost of on-ramp. So we, you know, working with Two Brain, you know, we had doubled our cost of on-ramp. We had set up different on-ramp packages based on price point, which is number one. Number two, we also built in our heart rate based training into on-ramp. So someone's like, I need more than just the barbell work. I need to know how this works with my heart and how it works with my body. And so we offer six and nine one hour sessions to accommodate those kinds of people as well, who might be either really deconditioned or they are conditioned. They go, man, like I'm digging this. I want more. And we really take them through, hold them by the hand, if you will, and just show them how it works. It's been really cool for not only the member, but for us as a business. Okay. So like, give me a, a like a class perspective. I'm in your yeah. no, noon class or something like that. And let's say mm -hmm. the workout is, you know, I, like, do you, I guess the question would be, do you use this in strength workouts and conditioning workouts, or is it just predominantly in conditioning workouts or where does this thing show up? And then For what am I going to sure. see as I work out? Definitely. So just walking through generally, um, you'll come in, do a warm up that is, you know, led minute to minute by our coach. Mm -hmm. We have a strength piece to your question. We don't really pay attention to the heart rate if you're like doing a heavy back squat, okay, we know that we need that strength and it will make our aerobic efforts easier down the road when we are simply stronger. So yesterday we did heavy thrusters. If I can do a heavy thruster at 185, whatever, and then I go and do Fran, it's going to help my aerobic capacity later. Okay. Then when it comes to conditioning, we have different zones. Okay. So each week we'll have a, a two, three. So it's like a green, yellow, really aerobic. We want a three, four. So something that's yellow, orange, something that's like pushing that threshold. And then we want a four, five. I just mentioned Fran. Fran is definitely <laughs> a four, five in Maybe orange, <laughs> red. Yeah, definitely. So it's going to be really hard. And our level goes up to five. Okay. Yeah. That's just where we are. Um, but we put each of those zones in on purpose, not just like, oh, I went four, five today by accident. It's like, well, wait a minute. We're doing a two, three. Like, let's just kind of pump the brakes here. I'm going to let you do a four or five on Saturday, which we do have that planned, but today's not that day. We want to, we'll, we'll build you up. We'll get you there. So we do both. In short, that's your answer. Okay. Now, so the, these zones, these, you know, two, three, four, five, and so forth, they're different for each client based on their heart rates, correct? So the zone, they'll have a different like heart rate based number. And so what we do, we, we figure that out. It's called your max aerobic function or your MAF. Okay. So Dr. Maffetone, he's really good about um, kind of defining that. If you have been sick or unwell, your MAF will decrease. Mm -hmm. Lucky for us, good news is that if we train aerobically, we can increase that max aerobic function and thereby increasing our threshold for work. Okay. So we help the client figure that out very early on. An equation 180. Minus your age is ideally your math. And then we divide that by 0.75. That gets your max heart rate. We don't go there very often, but we clarify for each client during their on-ramp with that equation. Okay. So let's, let me ask you, I'll ask you another scenario here. So let's say Cindy, Cindy is on your board uh, yeah. for as a workout and yeah. uh, you can obviously in that workout, you can drive the intensity up really high, but it's also a long tw 20 minute workout that many of us need to pace, especially given that mm -hmm. some people like, you know, pull ups and push ups start to stall, whatever. Let's say I'm working on this and you have it programmed for like a zone, a, like, uh, you know, the two, three or the medium zone or whatever you would call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I start creeping up into the, into the, you know, the higher zone. What do you say to me? What's that conversation like? 
For sure. So one way I look at Cindy and I'm like, I think the air squats probably the easiest of the, the movements in there. Right. So I'd say, Hey, look at the board and do like one air squat for me, one every five seconds. Mm-hmm. You could probably bang out five in five seconds if you're really trying to get a really high Cindy score. But if I want you to do Cindy aerobic quickly, which is challenging, by the way, I just say, hey, look at the board and pace out this air squat or break up your push up set or breathe at the top of your push up. Most people, not just men or women, but most people hold their breath during push ups in Cindy, right? If I said breathe through this, not just when you're huffing and puffing hands on your knees, it makes a huge difference. It might not get you green, yellow on Cindy, but I could probably get you to do it yellow, orange. If you really thought about it and paced yourself, it just depends on what our goal is for the day, but that's how I start helping someone do that. Yeah. So I'm, as I'm doing this workout, I'm going to have targets in place and you're going to have brief me on the workout. And then I'm going to look at the monitor and I'm going to be like, okay, I got to slow it down. And the coach is going to give me feedback. Have I got that correct? Yeah, definitely. And I'm able to coach every single person multiple times a day. It makes our athletes, and we do call them athletes, um, more receptive to feedback. It makes them more coachable, which is awesome. Okay. So now talk to, we've got the features of this thing and we know how it works. Now talk to me about the benefits for the client. And then I want to hear about if there are any benefits for you in terms of like retention and client success. And so sure, forth. So sure. Let's talk benefits now. I think benefits just physically like when you work at a, a lower heart rate for most of your days, okay, it's going to reduce inflammation in the body. So someone who has tight hips, tight, tight quads or hands, whatever it is, and they can now get to depth, right? That's an improvement. If they can achieve lockout on any overhead press where they couldn't before, because now their muscles are just more relaxed. That's an improvement as a coach. The fact that I can slow my athlete down and they're not so worried about their score. They're more worried about their health. I have a more coachable athlete. I have a more compliant athlete. I have a better coach to athlete relationship. And it shows them that I am there to coach them and help them, which then they trust me. And that's how good relationships are built. Not just a coach yelling at you mid why when your hands are on your knees and you can't breathe. That's not great. That's just like cheerleading. And we're all about coaching. So yeah, it just makes it better for everybody. Okay. So like, obviously the members are getting something out of this because they're staying Uh, the gym. That's going to be a retention improver. And now I'm curious about this. Like, you know, you said you with two brain, you've increased the price of things and you've built these things in and you so forth. So does this device and this system become a retention tool? Like, and I'm thinking about things like level method where it shows progressions and you can, you know, Talk to me about the retention benefits of a system like this. Sure. So if I have a client who's broken, like when we took over and then they realize that I am now well, I don't hurt. I'm not in pain. That person's going to stay. And hopefully they're going to recognize that we helped them get out of pain. And like going back to that trust, they trusted that we would help them in that fashion. So it's definitely a retention tool. When you mentioned the level method, right? Our levels is like, paying attention to, I used to squat this slow. Now I can squat faster or I can squat more weight or I got more rounds. You mentioned Cindy, I got more rounds on Cindy. And then I look at my heart rate data. I wasn't in the red until the last five minutes, right? And so we can use those as tools and those as metrics to gauge overall fitness, health, wellness, and ultimately improvement. And so, yes, that definitely serves as a retention tool. Okay. Now in terms of performance, yeah. when, when you do this heart rate training and then you get to those days where it's like a tester day and we're going to go, you know, sure, all the way, hard, yeah. are you starting to see people getting significant improvements as a result of the slower training earlier? Definitely. Definitely. Because not only like, can they have the capacity to go and do that? Cause like they're training lower. Right. And I say go hard on one or two days a week they haven't tapped into that high octane, high burn for the first three days of the week or whenever it is that we programmed it that, that, that week. So they can actually do that. They can do what we ask and they can do it better. And not only that, like, because they've moved slower, they probably move better and they've refined their movement pattern. They practice good, strong, positive mechanics, allowing them to, to do great things when the time is called for. 
That's interesting because in my history, I've certainly, you know, I've certainly looked at workouts and, uh, you know, we go through the entire week and you've gone hard the entire week, you get to Friday and you know, you need to go hard again, but sometimes I just don't feel like it. So it's an right. interesting principle, right? The way if maybe I had gone a little bit slower and still worked out earlier in the week, I'd be able to go harder on Friday, but I always have in this in perception in my head, you know, you need to go hard all the time. And that might not actually be true, at least in your experience, I, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about the implementation of this now. So this is an interesting one where how do you sell slower to existing members? You've got an, like an old school affiliate. You've got a bunch of people who have been brought up on let's, you know, let's meet pukey in the parking lot and so forth. How does, how do you do that? And then how do you, you know, onboard your newer members into this culture? Talk to me about these things. Sure. I think you say, you say I'm boarding. I think before we even get to that point, it's the notice of intro. Yeah. The people who are willing to come in for the notice of intro, and then we can start talking to them and I'll be maybe preaching a little bit of slower is better and just plant that seed. That's a huge help. We also, when we have our notice of intro, they're able to just kind of see physically like look out at class. Cause we have like this bar top table and they can see people practicing what I'm talking to them about, like right then. And they're like, these people move really well and they're really strong. And this is, this is cool. And so not only is it from what I'm saying, but then seeing sometime is believing. Then I can talk to them about practicing patience, being humble, like, all right, man, and walking them through what that actually looks and feels like real time during a training session. And they can see it on the board. And so when I say, hey, do this for me. And they watch that their heart rate actually does it. That's really cool. Watching the execution of that new athlete. And so, I gotta ask you this. Yeah, I got I to gotta jump in and ask you this one, because there's in, in the functional fitness community, there's always this perception that it's for elite Navy SEALs and so forth. And that's a perception that we've been fighting as gym owners for, you know, 15, 15 years now. Sure. I struggle yes. with that because I'd get someone to come into an on ramp or a, pardon me, a no sweat intro. And I would, you know, say, talk to them about how you know, training is tailored to you and blah, blah, blah. And then I've got like three guys, you know, bleeding in the corner over there. Yeah, it can be a difficult <laughs> sell. So have you ever got someone in one of these no sweat intros and had them say, I, I think this program too hard for me and you're like point over there and it actually yeah. convinces them does that happen to you all the time all okay the time. so that's a, this is a problem solver for some some of the major issues with functional fitness yeah. right and this might even be something that uh you know orange theory has kind of figured out where they're they're commoditizing intensity as chris cooper has said but it also helps the uh what we'll call the late adopters right when crossfit first came out navy seals uh you know elite special forces and then hardcore athletes and so forth it's trickled down all those people already found it now we're trying to you know get people to do functional fitness and these people might be quote unquote normal people right like yeah. you know like me right so it's, sure. it's easier to show them paced functional training probably than insanity if you for a better lack of sure. better term yeah definitely okay so, yeah so let's go into now so that, that i love that on the intro side of it and you can bring this in explain it show them get people in the door how did this go when you brought it in and you've had the old school crowd what happened there yeah um be very honest and open about this we had some people leave yep. and at the time that is terrifying and you're like, oh my gosh, are we doing the right thing? And now hindsight, yes, we definitely made the right decision. But it also changed the culture of our gym. And you hear like community, community, community. Community is great. Your culture dictates your community and the people you decide to keep and who they want to surround themselves with. And so people who doubted us and were like, this isn't CrossFit, like, okay, go go over there, like go away, where whatever, go die in the corner. That's fine. <laughs> like, but I know those people had a hard time squatting to depth. They were not very coachable. They had a hard time achieving lockout on things. They were our honestly our poorest movers. And so we kind of purged the things that we didn't like about our culture. And now we have the vast majority of our people who we genuinely uh, appreciate having in our space because uh, they come with our vision. They have the values that we're looking for. And that's when you know you truly have something special. So yeah, as a gym owner making that transition, it can be scary. I don't want to underscore that, um, but we've gained so much more. So you obviously saw this program, but believed in it. And then yeah. decided within six months, I'm going to, yep. you know, put this thing in, had some, mm -hmm. you know, probably some tough conversations with some people. Definitely. Uh, did, did some of the old schoolers buy in and say, Hey, you know, I was skeptical oh, yeah. at first, but now, you know, now it works. Definitely. Talk yes. to me about and, that. And, how did that, how did that go? 
yeah. And I was going to kind of jump in if you hadn't mentioned that question. I love it. So thank you for asking is uh, one, uh, one of our coaches, uh, Vaughn Smith, like he's been excellent. Uh, so he was a big proponent of it before. And he was doing some of the ticker training amongst like the regular traditional CrossFit classes before we took over. And everyone's like, they, they value him and they respect him as, as do we as a staff. And they're like, what's that guy doing over there? Like, well, we're going to come back to that. <laughs> uh, Cause that shouldn't happen in a corner, by the way, if you're out there listening, but it was so good that I'm like, I need to listen. And he invoked buy-in from other people that had been there longer than we had taken over for. And so it's, you listen to your staff, you listen to what they're doing and what they value. And then you watch your members, watch that person you go, think there's something really we're on to this. We should probably go down that path, but you also need to learn more and you also need to try it for yourself, which we did. And then we benefited my wife and I personally, and we go, okay, let's, let's pull the trigger. Let's make this decision and, and go from there. Yeah. So just being open and transparent with your members, having numerous sit down meetings and town halls and like, this is why we're changing the trajectory of your gym. And again, it just engenders trust and good things happen. How does your membership? And again, there, I know it's diverse, so I, you know, but I, my yeah. question, I guess would be when you did this, did you see a shift in overall membership? And the explanation that I'll say is that when I started my gym in around 2012, 2013, we were, there was a lot of competitors. We made some changes. It wasn't heart rate training, but it was more of a focus on other aspects of like, you know, health and fitness. And most sure. of our competitors vanished. Did you see a transition, yeah. not necessarily with those elements, but did you see a transition in the, in the makeup of your group as a whole? A little bit, yeah. Um, but I think we've got a really good, even spread of, say, ages, if you will. And so it's not catered just to old people or those who are exclusively out of shape. Now, I will say it's lowered the barrier of entry to more of like the newer athlete. Totally. I get that. But if you're trying to build a business that reaches more people, um, that's where it's at. If you want to go the competitor route, like go ahead. You just might be limiting yourself and your business for the long term. We're 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 playing the game of life, which unfortunately we will all lose. But <laughs> it's the game that the vast majority of people will play, and they'll play it the longest. Mm -hmm. And so that's who we want to help. I love it. Now, this is an interesting one. So you're doing heart rate training, which is obviously going to set you apart from other affiliates because I haven't heard of, I'm, maybe there, there probably are others that are doing this, but I haven't seen any, but this does put you kind of in that orange theory realm. So talk to me, does it that does. make you a competitor with orange theory or talk to me about market advantages, disadvantages? How does this all go? Sure. Um, I'm not really worried about orange theory. Like I think they're cool. I think they, they've got their own space. We do have one about 15 to 20 minutes away from us. And I haven't really heard, oh, I tried that orange theory before I tried you guys. It just, the conversations haven't come up and I've been open and welcoming to have those conversations, but they just haven't really happened. We do have, I'd say about eight to 10 affiliates within a 10 mile radius of us. And it does make us unique. Um, and yeah, some people did leave and go to them, but not in droves that you might be really worried about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it makes us a little bit different, but I'm not worried about the difference or people going to other places because of that difference. I think if anything, it's, it's more than helped us for sure. Okay. And have you ever gone to the yeah. theory? I haven't. Have you gone? Shame on me. I have not. I probably should just to, you know, to see what it's like. Um, but I think with the combination of what we do with CrossFit and more functional movement and being what I, this is a perception, a little bit more diverse with what we can, what we can do. I think it makes us uh, a cut above, but I haven't tried it. So I can't say that for 100% certainty. So I probably yeah, should. That's, it's an interesting one. And I would be curious to see, you know, your thoughts, if you did a class, cause I haven't done one either, but uh, I understand that it's like, they're not using quite as many movements and then they're not using as, you know, mm -hmm. the weight, the loads and different things like that. Like it's, it's a little bit more sure. formulaic. Uh, so, you know, that would be obviously a very distinct advantage for you is that you, know, you can go to thrusters up to 225. If someone really feels like sure. you're doing all these, you know, different movements that maybe aren't available. Uh, I'd be curious. One day, take a class and send me an email. Let me know what, uh, yeah, what you think about cool. it, you know? And you All can, right, you can, assignment. Got it. And you can even do this. You, put, you, know, you have to do the same workout. You put their their monitor on and then put your monitor on, do the same work at your facility and theirs, and then compare sure. the data, right? Overlay. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. 
if someone's thinking about this, this program, so someone out there is listening and saying, wow, I've never thought of this, or maybe I've thought of this, but I've never actually talked to someone who implemented it. What would you tell that person? What's, what are the challenges going to be? And what are the benefits going to be? The buck always stops with you, right? As the gym owner, like you, you make the final decisions. And so if somebody is kind of chafing at the direction you're going, it's your job to say, Hey, like, this is why we're doing this and just be very open and transparent. Um, I went through the nutrition course with Jen Broxman and she always said, like, be curious and be kind. And that's exactly what you need to do with these people. Be curious about why they're coming to you in the first place. Um, don't judge. And like, this is, this is why we're doing this. I, I truly think it's going to help you and, and show them the path. That's been the message all along. Um, be prepared for your culture to shift in, I would say, the most positive way possible. Um, but just kind of get ready for that. And so when you change your philosophy, people might chafe at it. But that's okay, because those who truly believe in it will remain. And those who don't value what you do, they'll drop off. And it's been really cool. Last thought here is to watch people come back. Like, you're ready for this now? And they go, yeah, like I'm broken. I need you. And it's really cool. So have you had people leave, it, leave do something else, come back and, and kind of come, yeah. come to the light for a lack of a better term? Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool to watch that happen or they'll just drop off for a little bit. They'll go do some races or it's seasonal. Um, but like, man, like I'm in a really tough spot right now. Like, all right, tell me, tell me the things and, uh, we'll help you fix it. We'll help you. We'll help you get better. You know, it's pretty cool. It is cool. You know, it's going to give me something to think about when I do my workout later today, maybe in that first 15 or 20 seconds, maybe I'll try not to spike my heart rate to, you know, to 220 and then uh, right. end up dragging myself across the workout for the rest. Of it. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you come on. Yeah. over. If I ever so, yeah. uh, make it across the border, I'll come down and visit you and strap on a monitor. Uh, Chris, thank yeah. you so much for being here. I really appreciate your perspective on something not a lot of people are doing. Definitely. Yeah, love it. Thanks. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah, that was Chris Follick on Two Brain Radio. I'm your host, Mike Warkenton. My heart rate was stable for the entire show. I assure you of that. For more shows like this and advice from Two Brain founder Chris Cooper, please subscribe for more episodes. And if you're on YouTube, please hammer that like button.